Run, run, run. Sure to be all about the ground game when Corey Hall and his crew take on Stanford tomorrow. The Cardinal bring in the nation's best running back in Bryce Love. How does the Beavers' defense slow the speedster? And Oregon State just hitting their stride in the ground game. Can they keep it going? It's Oregon State and Stanford on a brand new edition of Talking Beavers. Talking Beavers is presented by Wilson Motors in Corvallis. What a test for Corey Hall in his second game as the interim head coach for Oregon State as they welcome in Stanford and one of the Heisman frontrunners in running back Bryce Love. Plenty to talk about on today's Talking Beavers. Jason John Baptiste, Amanda Maynard, Lindsay Schnell, because it's really cold in Portland. <laughs> For new NBC Sports. You can't see the logo, but it's cute. It's awesome. And the birthday boy, Evan Bernard. I know he didn't want to he say He didn't it. get a hat for his birthday. He's oh, very disappointed. Oh. All right, still ahead on the show, we're going to discuss how love stacks up in the Heisman talk, plus how the Beavers have kind of found their own stride when it comes to the running game. Uh, but the Beavers coming into this one off of their second bye of the year. It seems like this came at a pretty good time, particularly with everything that was happening with Gary Anderson. How needed was this time? I think it was needed a lot just because, you know, they played against Colorado. They had probably their, not probably their best performance of the year. The running attack was where it needed to be. You know, they were able to really start the, the game running the ball, end the game running the ball, 500 plus yards of offense. So having this time to build upon that is huge for them. Yeah, I think that it was such an emotional like mm -hmm. couple days. You know, you're really low and then you're really high. Important for them to have this time to kind of even out and figure out. And then, of course, anyone that's beat up and, and just like you guys both know, just banged up in general, it's nice to have a week off. Yeah, absolutely. And it seems to be what, almost in the middle of the football season, you get that break. It feels good. You, you know, obviously your body's breaking down. And uh, to have a good bye week and come off a... Honestly, a really good game that they yeah. should have probably won. Yeah. Um, so the emotions, like you guys are saying, are high. They're excited, and and I think they're you know they're going to be ready to go because they're like, oh man, I can't wait to get back on the field and obviously they get to play Stanford. And it's a Thursday night and game. It's a Thursday yeah. night game. Yeah. There's like a lot of really yeah. goes well, for State. <laughs> uh, well, Colorado, like you mentioned, I think Jason. Uh, I mean, that seemed to be the most complete game that they have played. How do you keep that momentum going? Obviously, you've had a break in the middle, right. uh, but but how do you keep that? going for the rest of the season well you have to stay close early you can't fall behind you know in the first quarter second quarter because what ends up happening is that the atmosphere and the energy from you know the stadium and the fans are you know uh, escapes and then the players sense that you know the defense starts to sense that so it tr it's a trickle down effect so I think if you stay close and you're competitive early on that will hope that will lead them to being more competitive and having a close game leader in the game also necessary right because when you get behind you have to throw the ball that's not this yeah. team's strength um so you want to be able to be on the ground early be competitive and then i think the solution to that will be to have bryce love maybe not play he's questionable right now about if he's going to play tweaked his ankle against oregon but he's in the highs in the race yeah. you don't take a break yeah we'll um and i think also too uh i think the team's going to come out ready right we understand that they know they can run the ball now right and coach hall is going to make Huge. sure they run the ball yeah. establish yeah. the run game so i think they have an identity there finally and i think they're going right. to keep on doing that yeah. well certainly an interesting transition for Corey hall he talks a little bit more about that right now um well i think the difference is kind of started or and i'm not even going to say kind of the difference has started to take um shape that first week and it was just probably a different practice format um as far as calls being played again there's a mutual respect um amongst the staff that understands where this team is uh, right now currently um at this stage in the season so at the end of the day um you, you have to put players in a position to be successful um, on the field, you know, both on and off the field. And um, I think as a staff, I know as a staff, that's been the goal. So what's changed? There'll be tw there have been tweaks, right? But there's nothing different than what you guys really saw during that Colorado game. It was just a, a collective effort to uh, really build build off of that. In our Les Schwab quick fix, the offense in particular firing on all cylinders against Colorado. Their stats up big time across the board compared to the first six games. Scored 33 points against Colorado. 
course, is an average of just over 19. Passing yards up, rushing yards up over double against the Buffs. Uh, and the same thing with third down conversion. How do they sustain these numbers going forward? So I think it's important to note that Colorado's not a very good team, you know, where just like when we were talking about how much they were struggling against Washington SC, you know, like the top tier of the conference, when you play the bottom tier of the conference, it's going to go better. Stanford is in the top tier again, and more importantly, they're so physical. That's one thing that's going to be really, really tough for Oregon State. But I think that, like Ev said, that, that they've established this identity that they decided we are going to run the ball no matter what is huge. And I think and Jason Evanson, you could speak to this. It gives you confidence, I think, when your coach says, you know what, we're not going to change everything because of who we're playing. We believe that we can do this. Yeah. I think one of the biggest things, too, is that anytime you play a team such as, uh, as a Stanford or the upper tier of any of the conference, you your creativity has, your, your creative juices have to be flowing. Have to, because you're not going to be able to do the same old, same old with a team like Stanford because they're so tough, because they're so rugged. So you're going to have to be more creative. You're going to have to uh, have, like, new wrinkles to the offense you know try to trick them you know confuse them and I think that's the way that you're able to um, be successful running the ball is to have something that they haven't seen yet right. and so. that's where the bye week comes in right exactly. you, know, you get, a, you so get an extra exactly. couple days to throw some stuff in yeah. there change it up because they know you know our playbook obviously they know some of our plays but now we have to be a little bit creative we're mid-season now yeah um, so yeah that bye week was huge and speaking of which something that might actually really work because we haven't seen too much of this during the season is maybe having Tyner and Nall both in at the same together time. Okay. together you know I mean yes. uh, this is yes. a defensive guy I know from a defensive <laughs> standpoint to see the both of them together on would the field confuse you. it, it yeah. would confuse me I want to know who to get the ball because they've both been successful running the ball as of recently so why not have both of them on there and then you know do something with you know with the both of them misdirection wise any other changes you you think should happen moving forward the five games left uh, adjustments that Corey Hall should be making? I think he made the adjustments last week. You yeah. saw it. I mean, <laughs> the yeah. total amount of yards. Uh, obviously, you won't have that this week. You won't have 500 plus total yards. That's no. not going to happen. Uh, it's going to be a you game. You never know. Come on, it's uh, the Beaver Show. I think it's going to be one. Of the, I think it's going to be a game that they're going to be battling. Going, you know, it's going to be a lot of lo lot of runs, a um, lot of defensive stops. I think uh, it's not going to be a lot of high scoring, in my opinion. Yeah, I think. Yeah, I don't think it's. If, uh, I'm not gonna say it's not gonna be high scoring, but what I'll say is that there will be a lot of runs, and what they do need to do is stop Bryce Love. Um, so something differently that Corey Hall could probably do is load that box and force them to beat you passing the ball. All right. Well, Corey Hall certainly bringing the energy, the spark, the fire. A lot of people loving his fiery post-game speech. Take a listen. Now we talk about a goal. Now. Pick your hand up, because you did not lose. I could care less about a score. I want everybody to look at those totals, and you tell me the things they've been doubting about us. You just learned something about yourself. We start on Monday, and we start on Monday for the rest of our perfect season. We are going to fix us, because now we know what to do. Are you ready to start hey, on Monday? Listen, Jason's going to get in there. Wow. Every, every, wow. every team <laughs> needs a hype man. Every team needs a wow. hype man. Corey Hall <laughs> is the hype man. So yes. you put that, you put the hype man in the head coaching position. Oh, forget I mean, about it. Let's get it on. Let's go. Let's get it on. You know what I mean? play for him. I, I will say, go. I got I to gotta give credit to the Oregon State Marketing Department for that. Honestly, yeah. uh, capturing that moment. With the music. Uh, the, yes, the music, with the music. Yeah, that yeah. is huge. So yeah. big ups to Oregon State's Marketing Department. I love it. Yeah. Um, and obviously you saw Scott Barnes, our AD in the background, just loving it, eating it up. And, uh, yeah. you know, Coach Hall is doing the great things for us. And it literally just changed in a week yeah it's just Crazy. remarkable to me and I, again I just really give Hall and uh, the kids a lot of credit kids are way more resilient than uh -huh. we think usually but right. they went through a lot and it's just kind of remarkable to me like Gary Anderson walks away and I think that they're better for it yeah, yeah. all right later in the show Terry Baker and Sean Mannion scoring off in our day and best bracket but first Oregon State's ground game got going against the Buffs what they need to do against the Cardinal this week Take the lead. No. No, it's gonna get there. Touchdown. The running game finally.
finally gaining some ground against Colorado. They rushed for 237 yards in that one. What worked? Here's what the coaches had to say. You know, starting to get back tired and healthy. It's starting to get a lot of guys, those knick-knack injuries, starting to get back healthy. So it's now it's time to get two backs on the field at a time so we can try to get the ball rolling and running downhill and doing some good things, try to ball control a little bit and give it, giving our defense a time to, to rest and, and be ready to go for us. Yeah, I think health is, health is one, is one you, know, and, you know, Thomas Tyner is one, a good example of that where the, the first part of the year was you had some of those nagging injuries and he's full speed now. He's, he's looked really, really good in practice he's you know way more knowledgeable as far as the offense and um and, and the concepts the terminology all those things and so when you get those guys more and more comfortable as the season goes with what, with what they're doing then you can start to build those packages and and you know so we were able to be kind of creative with with that stuff against colorado get some of those groups on the field that involve those running backs and kind of mix, mix and match them a little bit based on their skill set and maybe what their strengths are and um you know and so definitely looking to continue that going forward so the coach is talking about just how Ryan Nall in particular, you know, getting the ball in so many different ways. How important is that creativity going to be moving forward? I think also, too, Tyner. I think Coach yeah. Lockett was talking about Tyner getting him involved. He's, he's finally healthy. Um, those, you know, obviously, like he said, I think it was like week one or week two, we are talking about how long is it going to take Tyner to get to that, you know, full uh, playing The Tyner we expected. Yeah, the right? Tyner we expected. Uh, and coming from those injuries and being confident and running the ball. So, we got, like you said, Coach, we got four backs. We yeah. got four backs. And that that's the thing, the too, is that they each have a different characteristic yeah. of something that they could do. Mm -hmm. I mean, Tyner could catch the ball in the backfield. I mean, he could run in between the tackles. He could run off tackle. Ryan is the bruising. I mean, yeah. he's the bruiser, right? So he goes in the middle. He um, wears on the defense. Then you have AP, who's like the quick back, the scat back. Then you have Johnson, who's also like a bruiser. So you have a secondary bruiser. <laughs> well. So, I mean, all of them present something the different. Um, the offensive line has done a really good job of opening holes against Colorado, um, which was the first time that we've even really seen that this year so far. So I think their, their ability to open holes and present something for these backs to, you know, to run yeah. through and actually get to the second level has been huge. Yeah, we so. talked about, right, we, we complained about the offensive line not being that great, whatever, whoop de whoop but right. you know, they're looking pretty decent. Obviously, Colorado's not that upper. Yeah, I'll just get right. Stanford is progress. Progress. Yeah, but progress. Progress. Stanford is bad against the rest though they're number yeah. 10 in the Pac-12 you know they give up almost 200 rushing yards a game and they don't have that defensive presence like we've become used to the last few years like they don't have a Solomon Thomas or a Shane Scove they're kind of still trying to find that identity so I think that this that is an opportunity yeah. for Oregon State what's tough is that Stanford is so big yeah. and so strong all the time they just yeah. beat you up at the line of scrimmage yeah well, speaking of which, uh, we're going to take a look at a play that worked against Stanford from Oregon and a similar play that worked for Oregon State last week. So what are you guys seeing? In wow, this? just, you know, you got, got your guys pulling over here and, you know, the hat placement, right? Riding, uh, Ryan's reading the hat placement of that. Sees it, bounces outside, gets to the outside, and then you get more blocking. Those guys are still going downfield. Your receivers are still blocking downfield. And it's the movement, too. I mean, like, the ability of the offensive line to move and for Ryan to be able to uh, react off of what, based upon the, the development of their blocks. Yeah. And it's a very similar play here with uh, with Royce and uh, with Oregon, where they're going to do the same exact thing. The only difference between what Royce did and, and what Ryan didn't do is that Royce is going to take it uh, inside. Whereas Ryan yeah. bouncing outside, right. so I think Ryan, I think with this run, Royce was a little bit more patient, yeah, uh, and uh, waited for his blocks to develop as opposed to you know uh, hitting it the hole too fast and too quickly and then bouncing to the outside. So he got a little bit more yards that way. So, um, but both. I mean, if they have the ability to do that, like Oregon did, then it's going to be a very, a very good night for that offense because you're going to keep the ball away from Bryce Love, and, <laughs> and, and, yeah. and, and they're running, um, rushing offense. So, and the time position, as we've talked about in the past, is huge for Oregon State because it gives that defense yeah, opportunity so true. To, to, you know, relax. And, and they you know, so one thing that's interesting about um, Oregon State now that they're running the ball and they have a quarterback, you know, obviously that that can run and he's a little more dual threat than in the past but when Riley was at Oregon State you had Oregon State and Stanford who were running pro style yes. you know Stanford is yeah. such a pro offense <laughs> it's a huge part of why they put so many people in the NFL yeah. Yeah. but so th this is something they are used to playing against I think mm -hmm. that matters a lot yeah 
It was huge, yeah. All right, still to come, our running back expert, Evanson, giving us his top backs in the Pac-12. But first, we're breaking down the headlines of the week with Lindsay. Time now for our standard TV and appliance headlines with our veteran reporter of USA Today, Lindsay Schnell. Uh, the first one, still sticking with football. Of course, all football all the time around here until we get to my next two headlines. <laughs> but Mason Moran, he's back at quarterback. Now, this threw a lot of people off. What happened to Connor Blount? Okay, we're going to explain that. But first, Seth Collins still dealing with this mysterious illness. So that takes him away as a quarterback option. So they moved Mason Moran back to QB. Everyone probably remembers in the spring, he moved to safety. And that was after he was getting very limited reps at quarterback behind Jake Luton, Daryl Gerson, and Marcus McFarion back in the spring. So he's moved into that position. Hopefully the Beavers don't have to use him at all because that would mean Gerritsen is hurt. And of course, as of right now, we still don't have any new information on Jake Luton. Uh, Connor Blount and Aiden Willard are both redshirting this season. That's okay. why right now they're not in the mix. There's, you know, chatter about who's going to be around as a quarterback next year and who's sure. not. So that's the situation. That's why Mason Moran is now the backup. And what, I guess, what, what kind of prompted that move you know, to, to decision to, to have Connor redshirt and to, to move Mason over, because that would seem to be, again, kind of a roundabout way of getting a backup quarterback, but that's a good question, Amanda, and one that right now we cannot report on. <laughs> that's, that's always good. All right, number two, women's basketball news. Scott Ruick signs a big extension, and boy, oh boy, is he getting a pay raise with it. Amanda, we got into the wrong profession. <laughs> the most successful coach in Oregon State women's basketball history signed a five-year extension last week, meaning his contract at OSU is now good through 26, the 26-27 season, provided he's there then. That will be his 17th season in Corvallis. Uh, obviously, the Beavers have had a ton of success under Ruick. Besides going to the Final Four a couple seasons ago, they're the only program in the Pac-12 besides Stanford to win three consecutive Pac-12 championships. That streak goes on the line this season, obviously, without Sidney Weiss. And if you were curious, Scott Ruick, in that five-year extension, will be making an additional $4 million. Of course we're curious. $4 million. That that's, is a two, that's a $2.8 million increase. I think it's awesome that Oregon State is investing in women's basketball. And also, I told Scott when he signed the extension a couple weeks ago, which was at the same time that his son, oldest son and daughter had their birthdays, that I hope he bought them super cool Absolutely. gifts with this extra money. <laughs> All right, number three, we're talking a little bit about the wrestling team. Okay, yeah, this is interesting news. A former wrestling assistant coach has filed a lawsuit against Oregon State. Kevin Roberts, who was at OSU 11 years, was terminated in August, but now contends in a lawsuit that he was falsely accused of allowing or participating in derogatory remarks made by members of the wrestling team toward one of their teammates. An OSU wrestler complained in the spring. OSU investigated. They wound up, they actually, it's kind of weird. They fired Roberts August 8th, but this came after he had agreed to an ex, to a contract, most assistants are on a one-year contract, to a contract that would take him coaching through the 20. 18 season he was fired without cause which presumably means he was paid out but um we're gonna have to wait and see what happens osu said they cannot comment on pending litigation all right very interesting all right stick around later in the show we're handing out our x factors against stanford but first what are the beavers doing with a wwe belt mike parker is going to explain coming up next Racer Stadium sure to be rocking as Oregon State hosts Stanford in a midweek game that is coming up tomorrow night. And it is time now for our best foot forward brought to you by the Good Feet Store. And we're bringing in Mike Parker from Corvallis. So the Beavers coming off of by Mike. Uh, how does Coach Hall plan on capitalizing off of it? It's a great question, Amanda, because I really felt like right after that Colorado game and the Canute Rockney type fire him up speech by Corey Hall, that the Beaver players were ready to go out and play another game right then and there at Reeser Stadium. So they've had to wait a while to get Stanford on this Thursday night. But for Coach Hall, as fired up as he was and the players were, we asked him about the timing of the bye given the, the momentum the Beavers had going into the bye week. Given the situation and the circumstance, great thing. Um, obviously, you had the zero week, you know, the early game. Um, and we're fortunate you were able to get on the road and do some things in recruiting. Uh, early on and then again with the because of the circumstance that happened and um, having four days to, to prep and uh, prepare for Colorado the um, the advantage 
of this second bye week is just kind of, you know, see is, is what's going on right now for real or was it just something that happened out of emotion, um, out of a traumatic situation? So clearly, Coach Hall looks at it as a plus to get more of the schemes, to get more of that attitude built in, the culture, the identity. So I know that uh, they were fired up after the Colorado game, but they've had time to heal up and get ready for a very physical Stanford team Thursday. So we hear there's been a WWE belt roaming the sidelines. I know Ryan Nall had it against Colorado. What's the story with that? <laughs> well, the breaking out of the belt was something new in a game. They've had some things like that go on in practice throughout the entire Gary Anderson era. But Ryan Nall, amongst the leadership committee on this Oregon State football team, actually went to Coach Hall and said, hey, how about during the game? And it wasn't as though Ryan was looking for something for himself. But I asked Ryan about the breaking out of that wrestler's belt. Yeah, um, you know, Co Coach Hall met with us, um, the leadership committee before, and asked us what we think we should do, how to switch it up, some things, you know, kind of to get some juice and energy. And someone suggested, you know, like Miami had, they got the chain, and, and you know, who, who got the, the, the cane, the walk, you know, so people, different schools got different things, and we had the, the wrestling belt, so we thought that we might as well use that. And, uh, you know, I uh, ended up having a couple touchdowns, so they, they gave me the belt, and I was rocking the thing and, and having fun with it. Well, Coach Hall says it's by the players, for the players. The players wanted to do this. Corey's given a whole breath of fresh air and a sense of, of fun again for Ryan and for all of the players. So more power to the guys. They're on the sideline, not rubbing it in the faces of the opposition. They're getting to enjoy something together on their sideline. They're hoping to have more belts broken out against Stanford. Now, I know for the rest of the season, uh, they're going to be facing some rushing defenses that aren't quite as good. Uh, you know, how can they take advantage of that? Corey Hall's stamp, Amanda, has, has already appeared in a variety of ways, the chief of which seems to be this sense of energy, enthusiasm, excitement, that breath of fresh air. But let's make no mistake, he also popped his head in those early offensive meetings and said, I want to run the football. And that's a good plan going forward. Stanford is good, but they give up 182 yards a game on the ground. And future opponents, while they're good, have had some vulnerability against the run. So the Beavers kind of getting back to being a tough, physical, run-oriented team will serve them well down the stretch. Thanks so much, Mike. We look forward to seeing you back here tomorrow for a special edition of Go Beavs. Now, coming up, who are the best running backs in the Pac-12? Evanson, our running backs expert, is going to be breaking that down for you. Coming up next. Chris hands off, looking luck go, little jitterbug. Oh my, what kind of speed does he have? I mean, Bryce Love. Bryce Love is a tremendous talent. Obviously, they they will require his services on Sunday. Uh, he's a great player, but at the end of the day, you know, uh, one player doesn't make a team. Love, he's got a chance. Oh, what kind of speed do you got, Bryce Love? He's got it up. Oh, oh man. So, um, my hat's off to him and to his success. I understand he's in a running for Heisman, and uh, that's great for him. But again, there's still a lot of football left to play. The challenge you know, for us this Thursday night is for us to be against Bryce Love and everyone else on that offense. Time now for our tour to Portland on Broadway tune-up. Bryce Love continuing his Heisman campaign in Corvallis this week. Vegas putting his odds at winning the Heisman at three to one only behind Penn State's Saquon Barkley. Time now to discuss the top five running backs in the Pac-12 with our running back expert, Evanson Bernard. Uh, we're going to be breaking down, again, kind of the best running backs uh, that we've seen so far and that also we'll be seeing uh, this weekend. Uh, so who do you have at number five? At number five, Ronald Jones, USC. Uh, I love the, his style. He's a jack of all trades, does everything really well. Um, doesn't have a, 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 a top thing that he really does that you're like, oh my gosh, he's, he's awesome at that. But he's an overall great back, great vision, uh, great balance, has a good speed, and obviously, obviously he's playing for USC, so he's getting a lot of TV coverage. Right, running back too, <laughs> you know, it's not, not hard to be good there. Yeah. All right, number four is uh, a name we all know very well. Yeah, some uh, Beaver Nation might be upset <laughs> at me a little bit. I understand, but I got Ryan Nall at number five four. Top five is pretty good. Top five, and it's, a, it's a great, right, the Pac-12 has a great running great back running this backs, year. Yeah. Um, and so it's a tough company, but obviously this, the speed, the size, 
to the speed, 6'3", 235, 240. Uh, I mean, and uh, the powerful, runs guys over, um, can catch the ball well. I mean, Ryan, Ryan obviously can do a lot of things and can be every day on back at the next level. And I want to know, especially you know what it takes to be a back at the next level. What does Ryan Null have to do uh, to get there? Maybe at the end of this year, maybe next year. Should he stay? Should he go? I think number one is staying healthy, right? And, you know, you, you think about, you're saying, does he go or not? And for a running back, you know, the shelf life is real short. So for Ryan, with the opportunity that he has, it might be to leave. But I know Beaver Nation, once again, will be a little <laughs> hurt. But we got other guys to fill that void if he does decide to leave. All right, who do we have at number three? At number three, uh, Miles Gaskin. I, I like him. He ri reminds me of myself, short, quick, <laughs> little back. Um, does it all, plays bigger than his size. Uh, and, uh, you know, I think he surprised a lot of people. Um, has a world-class speed. Um, you know, he can almost, be at the next level, he's going to be an awesome third down back. You can put him in the slot. Um, almost, uh, you know, comparison to James White with the sure. New England Patriots. So I like that. All right, number two is a guy that the Beavers saw just the other week. Yeah, Philip Lindsay. Obviously, he had that long run against us, and he just shows you that speed. And I think that's the first thing that people notice with him is his speed, his quickness, his zero to, you know, whatever you want to call it, zero to 100 speed <laughs> really quick. Um, but he gets to that top speed really fast. Um, he's physical for a little guy, um, and he's obviously he's durable. He stays healthy. You don't see him out, of, you know, missing games much. Uh, so he's a he's a little back that stays healthy. And he's got great hair. As got, yeah, he's got great week. hair <laughs> and a great name. <laughs> right, exactly. <laughs> and of course, number one, no surprise, no surprise. Bryce Love, top uh, running back in the country statistically. Yeah. Obviously, tops in the Heisman race. Yeah, that, that one was the easy one. Obviously, <laughs> he's up for the Heisman, um, and then you, it's crazy for him. For Stanford to be able to fill that void after McCaffrey leaves, that's pretty impressive. And that, that shows you how dynamic he is and obviously the offensive line is. Um, but he does it all, man. And I think uh, he's a guy that can be another every down back in the NFL. Uh, so he's going to have a great career. And obviously we're going to have challenges this week uh, trying to stop that. And uh, obviously, hopefully our, offense, our defensive line steps up, makes some great plays. Our linebackers fly around, make some great plays a lot of pressure but he's gonna he's not gonna be easy to stop we're gonna have much more to talk about on him obviously his speed is is pretty incredible oh, yeah. but right now here's Oregon State on the challenges of facing Stanford's offense Stanford will always bring that toughness I mean that's what they're known for so you know just kind of playing with toughness trying to out physical those guys up front that's gonna be the key he has great vision uh, and again like Stanford they love to run the ball and I think uh, every opportunity that Bryce has got, he's done a great job with, you know, he just has great vision and great feet, so. A look at the Pac-12's leading rusher so far this season. No surprise, Bryce Love topping that. Uh, What's over a quarterback? Hold on. Oh, a quarterback oh, I was in number say, four. Khalil well, Tate. I've been, I've been no, on the table about Khalil Tate for a long time. We're nah. going to talk about Khalil Tate next week when they nah. play Arizona. <laughs> Let me nah. give you this stat. If you guys want to talk about quarterbacks with uh, rushing yards, Georgia Tech's quarterback. Let's talk. Yeah, well, of course, they were the option. The point is, okay, listen to this. Oh, Bryce yeah. Love, 1,387 yards on the season. Do you know how many FBS teams he has personally outgained? Ooh, no. There are 129 like FBS teams in the country. Wow. He has personally outgained 91 of them. Wow. 91. He averages 10 yards a carry. Yeah. He's it like, is yeah. insane. Okay, so I have another stat for you. Oh, you, know how, you know how many <laughs> carries... It took him to get to 1,000 yards this year. Uh, I know it happened in September. 87. 87 oh, carries to get to 1,000. That's insane. That's impressive. Insane. That's Especially impressive. because, as we were talking about during the break, the fact that, you know, they had McCaffrey, and he sets the single-season um, all-purpose record, and then here comes Bryce Love. And what's really interesting is I was actually talking this week to Mike Bloomgren, the Stanford offensive coordinator. So Love drew, excuse me, uh, McCaffrey drew a lot of comparisons to Reggie Bush. A lot of people thought he was like Reggie Bush. Who is Bryce Love like? No one really seems to know. Wow. Because he's he's pretty small. He's 5'10", 196, and he's so explosive. You know, he was a track star in high school. He owns a couple USA track and field youth records. Who's he like? I mean, he's going to break um, Barry Sanders' rushing record, potentially. So... It's funny, so I was, I was going to say that name, but he doesn't have the moves that Barry Sanders does, right. but he definitely has the vision. Like, yeah. in a lot of those runs and that balance. you see, and balance. Yeah. So he has the vision like a Barry Sanders, but the, the top-end speed of, like, someone like a... 
um, like kind of like a Reggie Bush ish yeah. or like you know or Gail Sayers. I know that's yeah, well, well, that's okay. something like that. Older people watch our show. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we got some old school viewers. <laughs> something like that. And one of the one of the other things I, I heard coaches talking about with him is again vision and his awareness of make, his decision making yeah. so quick. Yeah. during a play while a play is unfolding. Yeah, his ability to diagnose what the defense is doing and adjust in a split second is incredible. I mean, he goes to Stanford, so obviously he's very smart. But, but yeah, let's not forget, though, too, their offensive line, right? Yeah. I sure? mean, Stanford yeah. has, it's a, you know, Bryce Love coming all the way from Carolina, as you told me, um, he knew the system, right? You're, yeah. you, you're coming all the way over here. You understand the system. You know it's a running Running, running the ball system. You're gonna come. They understand that McCaffrey was here before, and the guy before McCaffrey. They're all successful backs at the Stanford, uh, at Stanford. So they understand the system, and the offensive line has to get more credit because it's oh, almost yeah. like Wisconsin, right? Hey, Every I, back I, hey, is at Wisconsin. I, I wrote this week well, for USA sorry. Today that the, off the Stanford offensive line is the single most underappreciated yeah. position group in the country and it's not just uh, Love and McCaffrey you know they've protected for years like Andrew one Luck. like incredible Heisman candidates Andrew Luck was you know was yeah. a runner-up two years in a row Toby Gerhardt before yeah. that uh, Tyler Gaffney was not a Heisman candidate but he was a stud running back like yeah. right. I forgot they got that. it going on I mean it's easy for the offensive line to be you know that good when you're bringing in year after year one of the top linemen in the country. I mean, like, this last year, I think they brought in two. They brought in the two best <laughs> two offensive best. tackles yeah. in the country. Uh, that's the system again, right? Yeah, I mean, it, they, they know. People know. They, that's where they go to yeah, Stanford. Yeah, if you, if you it's, like it's, loading it's incredible, year. though, that they have they can recruit, recruit from such a small pool mm -hmm. because yeah. it's so hard to get into Stanford. Yeah. The fact that the two best offensive tackles in the country had good enough SAT scores yeah. to get in there yeah. is awesome. Yeah. Yeah. And it's, it's crazy for me, too, to think that players want to go to Stanford with the environment, it's kind of like dead. So it's crazy it's to true. think like, you know, the education part is number one for them right. when they mm -hmm. think about it, and then the caliber of football that they put out. Yeah. It took it took some time to get there, but yeah, they're true. definitely here now. <laughs> All right, still to come, what will it take for the Beavers to take home a win? We're going to hand out our X Factors for tomorrow's game. And up next, it's our damn best bracket reveal. Who's winning the battle between Terry Baker and Sean Mannion? Well, a busy schedule this week, each and every week for Oregon State. We've got Inside the Huddle coming up later tonight at 9.30 and a special edition of Go Beavs, a pregame edition tomorrow night. Coverage starts at 5 p.m. We'll be here. Lindsay will be live from Corvallis, so it'll be lots of fun. And in our Comcast business class, Built for Business, we're looking to crown the top performance in Oregon State football history in our damn best bracket. So this was our matchup last week. Terry Baker for Sean Mannion. Very tough. Let's oh, was it? Unveil <laughs> well. What? Are you it kidding me? Oh, come on. And wow. And we have come decided. On. I don't know why. I need but the, we have decided we need that the age tie level goes to the Heisman. Of course. We need the okay, ages. So we're okay yeah. with that. The, age, the average yeah. age of voters on that well, one. It's like, it's like what you, you talk know? about with Cooks, right? The recency bias. Sure. Yes, the recency I mean, but come on. There's only been one Heisman Trophy winner wow, in all of bad. Oregon State. Beaver Nation. I mean, come on. Well, you I don't know. Well, you need to vote for him going forward then, apparently. I hope Terry's uh, not watching. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Well, of course, again, you can vote at our Facebook page, facebook.com slash NBCSNorthwest. So we're going to unveil our defensive matchup going forward. Jordan Poyer. Yes, Lindy my favorite, favorite player. Versus Ezra Tuolo. And did you guys know he was on The Voice? Take yes, he was. Singing. Not, oh, oh, yeah. You're broken down and tired. Living life on a merry-go-round. And I can see that fighter. But I see it in you. Work it out.
people turn in. Wow. He, he was actually on Team Blake for quite some time. Okay, wow. but we are voting about who was the best player, not I mean, who was the best singer. Hey. No, 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 no. The, the, the Jordan Poyer, okay. hometown okay. boy, better win. Oh, Lindsay, um, you know how much you like Jordan Poyer. We all know that, okay? <laughs> we all know that. Fresh. Okay, here's the thing. I was going to vote. I was going to vote. But Jordan Foyer, but, but as, a fellow, as, a, <laughs> as a fellow D lineman, uh, yeah. I'm with Ezra. I'm with him. Like, that's right. That's all. That's, that's the, 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 the reason I, I love all Ezra. Number and one of the things too, we have to get Ezra to sing the national anthem, the yes. marketing department. Oh, that's yeah. a great yeah. idea. Yeah. 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 Let's get him to sing the national yeah. anthem. Um, but the, the thing about Jordan Poor, I think he was able to do so many things well. A returner, you could put him at corner. You he put was him at huge state, you on put special him, teams. You could put him yeah. anywhere. He was just a, a all-around football player, yeah, like an army um, knife. Like, yeah, he like, was. Yeah. And so uh, that's what uh, my vote would be to go with him. Yeah. Lindsay, I want you to make your case for Jordan Poyer. Jordan Strong. Poyer is the wow. single most decorated oh, defensive boy. player in Oregon State football history. Period. The end. Like he was one vote away from being a unanimous All-American, the first one in Oregon State defensive history. Like Ev said, he was a contributor all four years. You know, he came in, he was going to walk on, then he got to gray shirt, and then they were like, we got to play this kid. Yeah. Found his way, did so much was an incredible leader in the yeah. locker room you know him and marcus wheaton are the reason that they had that turnaround mm -hmm. in 2012 that they did and uh, you know we're not supposed to base it off what they've done in the nfl but i think that him getting to the nfl he's just a survivor yeah. and a grinder he's been the last because he got cut his first yeah right? exactly yeah. Played, um, goes to cleveland and now the bills so amanda uh Lindsay knows nothing of Jordan Poyer. I don't know, <laughs> <laughs> I don't know why you asked her. She knows hey, nothing. She knows MCM nothing. MCM over <laughs> here. She knows nothing. She knows nothing. She didn't do any kind of research. Nothing. Shout out. Nothing. Lindsay's nothing. birthday was just last week. Yes, <laughs> I photo. <laughs> All right, much more to come here on the show. But right now, Evanson's getting you ready for the game at the OSU Beaver Store. I'm Melanie. I'm here at the OSU Beaver Store. I'm in front of the 3 for 25 t-shirt wall. You'll find all your perfect tees for the season here. Right now we're focused on football season, so you find football tees. We change them throughout the year, so you always want to come in and check out this section. You'll find them at the Kaiser location, downtown Portland station, and here at campus online as well. We have uh, our women's cut as well as a whole selection for kids. You can mix and match the 3 for 25. You'll find all of that, your perfect tee here at the OSU Beaver Store. Fans start here. And we're less than 24 hours away from the Stanford Oregon State showdown at Research Stadium coming up tomorrow at 6 p.m. Can Oregon State keep the momentum going against the 20th ranked Cardinal? We will see. Time now for our Wilson Motor Game Balls. We're handing them out to our X Factors for tomorrow's game. Lindsay. It's all about Bryce Love. He's a Heisman candidate. He averages 10 yards a carry, and if Stanford wins, it'll be because of him. All right, Evanson. Uh, defensive line. Got to stop Bryce Love. <laughs> uh, they got to come big, and, uh, you know, I think uh, the last two games have been playing well. They got to keep it up. Jason. And going along with that, I think uh, after the defensive line, I think you have to look at Manasse Hungalu. I mean, He's the leader of that defense, has to stop Bryce Love, one-on-one -on -one matchup. And I think uh, that's where it starts and ends at, is with him. All right, circling back that's to all Bryce, Bryce Love. Love. <laughs> exactly. A lot of love in the field, uh, What do we think are the chances that we see him? Uh, well, okay, no, like, they don't, I don't think they need him to win, so I can totally see him sitting out. He So here's the deal. He tweaked his ankle early in the first half against the Ducks, but five minutes into the game, he had given them a huge lead because he had already rushed for 116 yards <laughs> on two huge plays. So I could see him easily sitting. He's going to be a game-time decision. You wonder how much of that is. Are they just trying to kind of psych yeah. Oregon State out? Well, they, yeah, go ahead. Uh, what I was going to say is that um, let's keep in mind that this is a nationally televised game, mm -hmm. right? right? It's the only game. It's the only game tomorrow, right? So he, if he wants to win the Heisman, he has to play. Yeah. I mean, the East Coast. This is a prime time game for him, so he could showcase his talent, showcase what he could do. I mean, he the guys rushed for an amazing amount of yards, and, and it's not like Oregon State is really going to. And a lot of people haven't seen it because they've exactly. kicked it 7.30 or exactly. later so right. many times. Well, and hey. most Heisman voters, along with Bryce's parents and yeah. great-grandmothers, yeah. who I spoke to this week, <laughs> yeah. have been asleep. Yeah, lace them up. 
Yeah. But it depends on if it's a high ankle sprain or low ankle sprain. Yeah, that's a. Um, oh, yeah, so Dr. It, Evans. No, it, it's true. <laughs> <laughs> it, I mean, it, it yeah. does make a difference. Um, but yeah, so. Yeah, once those juices get going, I'll yeah. be fine. Well, and but, Lindsay, you mentioned a, like an article that you wrote that's coming out tomorrow about Bryce Love uh, and his Heisman chances. What do you think? We talked about it with Mike Parker, but what do you think the, the chances are that. You know, he does win the Heisman. So I would guess that Saquon Barkley is going to win, even though Love's numbers are better. More people see Barkley. He plays for a more high-profile program. They're going to be in the playoff mix. I mean, two years ago, Christian McCaffrey rewrote the record books, yeah. and no one cared because everyone was asleep when he was yeah. doing it. And it's it's such an injustice and such a disservice yeah. to the Pac-12 that they that Stanford kicks so yeah. late. Yeah, yeah I, I mean, when I was playing ball at Oregon State, it, it sucked because my, my friends were at the club partying when we just <laughs> oh, Yeah. And so, uh, yeah. Toasting to you. <laughs> <laughs> hey, by, by the way, Everson looked the best I've ever seen him in, in that little he beater. Did. He I mean, with the golden, the golden locks. locks. I mean, like, I've never seen you. <laughs> so I've never seen you so good, man. I always want to approach you. You know, beaver store? Dude, oh, man, he looks so good in that. <laughs> All right, well, thank you so much for joining us tonight. We will see you back here for a special edition of Go Beebs, a pregame edition. Catch it right before the game at 5 o'clock tomorrow night. We'll see you then.